Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about following up and the importance of when to reach back out to your prospects. So the big question whenever you're in a sales process with a, with a prospect is how do I follow up with them to where they appreciate it, they want to continue to engage with me, and they ultimately will close into a sale? Well, it, the answer is it depends. And really you have essentially two categories of follow-up. One follow-up is you're trying to create a cold prospect into a conversation and you're just trying to get someone to have a conversation with you. It's a different type of follow-up than if you have already sent over pricing to say a property manager or a hotel manager and now you're looking to see, okay, they got my pricing, how do I follow up, what do I do? Well. The trick is to just be human and not be annoying. So the way I, do, I give this kind of advice is if you're dating a girl and you don't want to annoy her, but you want to impress her and ultimately you want to marry her, well then you got to play it cool, but at the same time you got to be energetic and really care. Right, so how does that work? Well, let's say, for example, we've had a conversation with a prospect, we've walked them through our service, and at the end we gave them a, gave them a price. What they're gonna ask for is that price to be sent to them on paper, right? Like anybody else who wants a quote for anything, they want it on paper so they can compare your quote to somebody else's or they can get the, the appropriate scope of work written there. So if they're gonna sign your quote and they and now you are, what, what, what you're saying is, what they're saying is I promise I'll pay you this much for this scope of work, right? So in the virtual tour world, if you have you know a couple pictures, a, a drone photo added in there, other types of services uh, in that scope of work, what you've done, you sent over a quote that outlines all that, right? So now you sent over the pricing, they're gonna say thanks, we'll review, what now, what's next? Well, I think it's appropriate to wait a day and the following day, so two days later, give them a call. Say, hey, Monique, or hey, you know, whoever your prospect person is, um, how's it going today? How, how you doing? Oh, we're doing great. How are you, Zach? Yada, yada, yada. You're on the phone. You, you got them on the phone. You say, all right, well, I sent over that, that uh, quote to you guys. I'm just following up and seeing where you guys are at in the process. So what that means is they're going to now give you the information you want to know is either, well, we're, we are reviewing that and some other quotes, or, well, we need a, a, a one more week or whatever it is. And what they're going to do is basically tell you where they are in the process of paying you money. So this is a very important phone call. And a lot of times you miss them on this phone call. If you miss them, if you call them and, and you leave a voicemail, um, that's okay, I would wait two more days. And then shoot them another call. If, the, if you miss them again, shoot them an email too and say, hey, listen, I've, I just wanted to follow up with you about this quote. How's it look or more like, where are you guys at with this process and when are we looking to schedule this virtual tour? So when you look ahead at, at when, when are we looking to schedule this, now it's going to kind of force their hands, say, okay, they're gonna have to get together, huddle up and say, do you wanna spend money on this? Do we think it's worth it? Um, and how you know how shall I respond to uh, to Zach and his team, right? So th this in, a follow up creates a response. You get data, you get feedback, and you can adjust to that feedback. Without any follow up, you might as well not send anything over to him at all. Expect it to take two, three follow ups before you have to actually close the sale. And you might have to have a second or third meeting, just going in there and talking to him, say, hey, here's who I am. I'm a normal person. I'm trustworthy. I'm going to do a great job, I promise. You know, send me the purchase order to this email or whatever. Um, and when you do that, uh, what's going to happen is they're going to appreciate that. And ultimately, they're going to get to a point where they have to make a choice. Right, so if you are engaged, and if you care, you follow up appropriately every two days at first for the first week, um, you will get an answer quickly. And if your price is too high, that's good. Your price wasn't too low, right? But you know, okay, listen, I can I can negotiate. You can always use negotiation tactics in that moment in the follow up. So if someone says, "Hey Zach, listen, you're quoting me three thousand dollars in a hosting fee," you know. I, it's an okay price, but if you lower it down some, I think we can we can get there. Or or they'll say, well, we had another quote that was a little bit lower than yours, so we're probably going to go that direction. But before they make that decision, that's where you want to be in the conversation. Say, hey, well, listen, I'll I'll match their price, or actually, I'll beat them by a hundred bucks if you give me a strong referral if you love the service. So what they're thinking is, okay, well, 
what this guy wants to do is build a partnership with me and I kind of like that so he's gonna give me a discount if I like what he gives I'll give I'll give a referral for him and it kind of it's kind of a win-win what happens is um, the prospect thinks well this guy really is doing a really good job building rapport with me since they're kind of on the same level and they're pretty close I'll go with Zach right and then you follow up again and when it and you ask them the question in the phone call if you can hey when's it appropriate for me to follow up with you again that's a good question like before you say goodbye say hey when's the good when's the good time for me to call you again to kind of go back over this and when are you looking to make a decision when you ask those questions they'll say oh well tomorrow okay or all will say oh in a, in a week or okay gotcha so in a week you call them again but you don't want things to get too lengthy in between your follow-up that's not good that's when when things start to be forgotten about people start to say you know what we had this money before I liked it before but now I'm thinking let's spend it somewhere else right more expenses and more things and capital outlays go other directions the longer you wait in your follow-up so be very consistent there's an old phrase all that is uh, that says the fortune is in the follow-up and this is so true it's not necessarily automatic follow-up sometimes it's just manually you calling someone and saying hey is that again just just checking in here I'm not trying to uh, be a nuisance just want to know what what we need to do next uh, for our scheduling purposes right just always blame it on the schedule or blame it on something else um, but really you want them to say yes to your offer right so I hope that's helpful in your follow-up journeys I hope you are following up and I hope you take it really really serious because it deserves your attention the more things you track the more you follow up the what what the more things you measure the more things you can manage right so measure your follow-up know what days you talk to them don't hammer someone every day but be consistent and this will make you more money than you than you probably could imagine from a couple phone calls and a couple email follow-ups and don't text message you're not a teenage boy right um, always call or email if you have to if you can't get a hold of them so that's that's it for now um, I hope you take this very serious I hope follow-up gets you and closes you a sale and I hope that you have the utmost success in your virtual tour profit endeavors thank you so much Zach out